Hi, I'm Derek from Good Times Marine. Today I'm in Queensland in sunny Brisbane. I'm visiting the Haynes Group, the home of Signature Boats. Going to meet with John Haynes and uh, John's going to take us through what is the magic ingredients that put these fantastic boats together. So let's head on in, meet John and, uh, and check it all out. Hey John. Afternoon mate, how are you? Very well. This is a pretty impressive wall of trophies. Yeah, we've been doing it for a while and, and uh, there's a, you know, from our first one, which was 1985 when we started this business in 84, all the way through to the current stuff that we have uh, up on the wall there, you know, tucked around the corner and we've got boxes of trophies from powerboat racing that are not on display. One day I need to put some shelves up and put them on display. It's a heck of a heritage. Yeah, it is, it is. It's uh, certainly, uh, as you can see on the walls, there's a lot of photographs of old race boats and when you walk through the offices here, there's a lot of nostalgia with all of the old racing photographs and stuff we did for many years. Very good. Uh, now we're building fishing boats. Well, that's, yeah, that's an exciting thing where you can take a fishing boat, make it practical, but make it drive like a race boat. You're going to tick a lot of boxes and make people happy. Absolutely. You know, I, I certainly didn't like, all years I was racing, I didn't like getting hammered in race boats. So we developed hulls and, and the design of the, the laminates um, to withstand the, the, you know, the harsh um, offshore conditions. However, um, you know, you've got to make them soft riding and comfortable and, and um, robust. Do you want to show us how you do it? Yeah, absolutely. Love to. Okay, let's go. So I thought I'd start you down here in the research and development shop, uh, show you how much work actually goes into building uh, a plug to make a mould off. So what we've got here is a Nexus liner being uh, built out of timber. Everything gets get it built out of timber before we take a mould off it. Okay. Uh, so that so basically, a lot of companies still do. A hull and a deck mould. Yep. We do a hull mould, a deck mould, and then a full internal monocoque structure. So you can see this whole hull has another part that goes inside of it, which I'll show you the parts later. Okay, wow. So all this sort of contraptions that are going on over here? What they're doing is they're vacuum bagging the non-skid. So that diamond pattern that you get in the bottom of the, the floors of the fiberglass moulded liners, there's actually a sheet of fiberglass that we take off the mould that has the diamond pattern built into it and then we'll vacuum bag down that to get even distribution of weight so there's no bubbles or, or ebbs and flows in the flat surface of the non -stick. Wow, okay. A lot of work in this, a massive amount of money that we dedicate to R&D. We've got a long pipeline of R&D. I've got two guys that are full-time dedicated to doing the R&D and you know, these guys are craftsmen. Yeah, fantastic. It's, it's very impressive seeing a boat in this sort of state. It doesn't even look like a boat, yet obviously it's going to pop out and look. Well, that'll all be destroyed. So once they take the mould off this, all of that will be destroyed and that's throwaway because we can't use, use that. Wow. Let's see the next stage. Okay, so what I've brought you over to show you now, Derek, is we've got a mould and they've gone with the first step. The first step for us is we tape up being a two-tone boat. So a okay. two-tone hull, this is a two-tone deck. So what, what they've done is they've taped up, they've sprayed in the gel coat bay, they've sprayed the white gel coat. So that's the okay. first, first coat. We, we do it opposite the cars. We paint first and then we put the glass in behind it. So we've got a female mould with a male part going into the mould. Once this has gone hard, what we'll do is we'll peel, all of this tape gets peeled off here. Okay. So, and, you, and you expose the rest of the mould. Now that's where we put the colour on. So we'll then put, this one could be a black boat or a red boat. We'll then spray the red colour on there, let that go hard, then it'll be moved over to the uh, chopper gun. Okay, well, let's get over to the chopping gun part. Great. So where we're moving over to now, uh, this particular hull is actually the hull, the 602 hull, that matches up to the deck that we just saw being made. Okay. So this one's had the skin laminate put in, and then it's had its reinforcements. Now, we use, we use a lot of knitted fabrics, and there's a lot of hand-laid glass that goes into the boat. So, this is basically the, the, the skin plus the reinforcement being double bias, uh, 24 ounce woven rovings, uh, 450 GSM chop strand mat, all um, laid onto the gel coat. Okay. So once they've done the, the skin laminates, the first stage, they let it cure, they check for air. Second stage is reinforcement glass, which is where this boat's at. Then they've also gone to the third stage here is where they clamp the transom into the boat, which is, on this particular model, is two layers of three quarter inch root ply, which is our veneer treated plywood. Now, there's a lot of companies out there say that plywood, don't have plywood in boats. 
rubbish. It's the best reinforcement material available to man. And, and the reason that we are, we are so adamant about plywood is we've tried all the other materials in race boats and we had a race boat many years ago that had five layers of Kevlar in the transom and we tore the transom out. You know how we fixed it? We went back to a plywood transom. Okay. So th th having plywood, as long as it's roof ply, it's treated plywood and it's veneer treated, which means what they do is they all of the veneers get um, dipped and treated, so it perme permeates each of the veneers. Okay. It gets glued together and then they dip the whole lot again. Now, a lot of people uh, or manufacturers uh, are using treated plywood, but they don't use veneer treated plywood. And the difference is, if you just dip the, 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 the final material, if you get a screw uh, hole that hasn't had silicon put in it to seal it, yep. you're gonna get uh, permeation of, of um, bacteria into that screw hole because it hasn't gone all the way through the veneer treatment. And that's why we can offer um, the warranties that we offer on our boats. I've got two questions from what you just said then. We hear a lot of people talk about wood rot in transoms, yep. stringer rot, all that kind yep. of thing. Would Rupai eliminate that with all the treatments that it gets? Absolutely. And it's also termite resistant. Oh, really? Okay. So, and, and you, you might laugh at that, but I have seen many years ago people who left their boat in a shed and the termites have got up through the bungs and have got into their boat. Oh, that's hilarious. So it is, yeah. Well, it wasn't for them at that stage. <laughs> no, but you wouldn't expect it either. But, so basically you can say to a customer, if you're buying a signature boat for days of rotting transoms and rotting stringers, it's not, a, not an issue anymore. As long as you maintain your boat by the warranty manual, it should, shouldn't be an issue. Awesome. How many layers of glass go into a signature? Because you know people talk about, oh, my boat's so strong, it's my boat's so heavy, and all that yep. sort of stuff. There's all these different things you can do to make a boat feel heavy, but the glass is where the strength is, isn't it, pretty much? Yeah, absolutely, and you've got issues also with towing weights. So you don't want the boat to be too heavy. What we've done to eliminate this is we're using knitted fabrics rather than just woven fabrics, okay. and the composite technologies and the resin qualities have come that far that you don't have to be necessarily massively heavy yep. to be massively strong. Having said that, we all of our overlaps, and when I say overlaps, because you've got a width of fiberglass yep. um, that goes into the bottom of the boat or into the side of the boat, we have eight inch overlaps. So it'll always come up eight inches um, this way and eight inches that way. So you've virtually got eight inches of double strength, which you can see the overlaps in the boat that run all the way along the chine and all the way along the keel. So talking about layers, in the hull of this boat, 600 GSM, 600 GSM, 24 ounce woven rovings, 600 GSM, 24 ounce woven rovings, 450 GSM, um, that's the thickness of the, sorry, weight, weight per grams per square inch, yep. uh, sorry, per square metre, um, and then you've got the overlap. So where it matters, in the keel and in the chine, nearly 12. it's double that. Yeah. Wow, that's so, amazing. What we should try and do, and, and if we, when we go down to the front of the factory, I'll see if I can find a cutout of a hull to show you how, how strong they actually are. It's, it, you know, people say that aluminium boats are three mil plate thickness. Yep. I'd much rather have some of our boats, you know, up to three quarters of an inch thick in the keel. I'd be, I feel much stronger with, much, much better going out in the boat like that than a three mil plate bottom aluminium boat. But that's, oh. you know, I'm a fiberglass boat man. You're a fiberglass man. All right, where's next? Okay, next we probably show you the skin laminate over here yep. of the Nexus liner that we saw, similar to what we saw the plug being built there. Okay. So there's a mould over here with a skin laminate on it that goes into this boat. Okay. So, so we're sure. sort of showing you the 602 all the way through. Okay, fantastic. So what we have here is a Nexus liner. So that's your full, I guess to use a car term, a, a monocoque structure. That, that gets glued in with methyl methacrylate, which is the same, it's a substance developed by NASA. Okay. Um, and it's a glue that, that gives you a, a, a mechanical bond of the two fiberglass structures. So what we have here again, they've gel coated the mold. So again, if you imagine that the, the, six, the, the model that we saw over there before with um, the plug being made of, they've taken the mold out of the plug, which is what is under here, that's yep. the mold. They've sprayed the gel coat on this, like we saw on the, the yep. 602. They've then put the skin laminate on this. They'll let this go hard. They'll check any of these areas, the corners out for air bubbles, um, which they'll then repair. And then they'll put all the superstructure, the strength, the woven rovings, the double bias materials, will then go onto this part, ready for it to be, once that's done, popped out of the mold, gets glued into the hull that we just saw over there. 
Okay, so this actual piece almost becomes completely bonded to the hull then? Absolutely does, yes. So the hull again is you're increasing in the side, so you can see the shape here. Yeah, yeah, That's the shape right of the there. side of the hull. So you've got your, your ring bulkhead basically is built into the liner, um, which, which we're very critical on glue points. So you can see all of these points here yep. are shaped to the shape of the, of the concave variable dead rise hull. Here, where, the, where your kill tank, your fuel tank and your bilge are here, all of these areas get bonded. Across here is all bonded. This is a bond area. This is all bonded through here. Gets glued to the, to the boat to reinforce the, the side of the boat. And that's why any of these Nexus boats, you hit the side of them, it's like hitting a brick wall. If, so if I'm getting this right, we've basically got a hull which has got six to seven layers of glass and all the critical parts are doubled up. Correct, yes. You've then got a Nexus liner which is then reinforcing the hull again. So Correct. you've basically got a, a yeah, two-part hull and then the deck would sit on top of that again. Well, no, we've got to remember, we've got all of the areas that are, that are open then, because the hull will sit in here. Yeah. Um, everything that that's, that's has air in it will be filled with high-density closed-cell polyurethane foam. Oh, and, yeah. and we don't use the cheap, low-density stuff. You know, okay. you know our mantra here, our mantra is we go out and find the best materials available, and then we negotiate on price. We don't go out and find the cheapest materials available, because okay. a, a cheap boat's not a good boat. So we're talking some pretty serious strength. If we look at some of the opposition brands, do they go to this much effort? Uh, I, I don't know. I can't comment on what they do, and it's, it's pretty hard. You know, I, I think the way we build a boat is, is you know, I'm, I've got a young family, you've got a young family. Yeah. I've got to be satisfied that if I took my young family out on that boat, I'm going to be safe, and they're going to be safe. So yeah. that's, that's you know, I know you're, you feel exactly the same way. Yeah, and I've enjoyed punching your boats through some pretty tough train, and they've never let me down. So uh, before I was in boats, I had five signatures to my name, and they were all fantastic. So yeah. it was really enjoyable to come in and then uh, join a part of the family as well. So Fantastic. So what's the next stage from here? Okay, so we've sort of done the moulding shop now. There's there's probably not, not much more to see. We might go and see, uh, we'll see if anything's being demoulded at the okay. moment. No so worries. That's the next step. Okay. So what we've got here is this boat has been has been taken out of the mould, um, and you can see it's got it's basically the, the the hull that is ready to have the internal liner put in here. So this is actually your boat, Derek. This is okay. the, the 543 SF. Okay, awesome. And um, this will have the full. The difference between the 543 SF and the boat we just looked at, the whole internal liner is actually built into the deck. Oh wow! Okay. So it's it's a one piece rather than being three pieces uh, like the 602 that we just saw. Yep. This is two pieces, so you have the hull, then you have the deck, and then you then it's fully um, foam filled. Okay. So we'll go from we'll go and have a look at the, the deck if you like of the 543 SF. Okay. okay. So what we've got here, Derek, is the deck for the 543 SF hull that we just showed you. So this is okay. your your boat again, and you can see the reinforcements that go on this boat. You can see how you know, look how strong this boat is, and that all that all gets bonded again in the, in the bond points and then the hull and deck gets laminated together you can see here the the, the double bias material yeah right so where we where we we um all of this will get riveted together not laminated together i should say and then it has an epoxy glue before the gallon rubber goes on and if you have a look underneath you can see the entire superstructure of this boat so there's a lot of work goes into this boat it looks like a boat when you're underneath it well it's the, the nice thing about this boat is that when um, when you join it together, it's the modular aspect of the boat, as you know. And, yeah. and what we've done with the 485 SF, with the 543 SF, and also the new 650 that we have um, out now, it's modular. So the hull and you can you can modify 650, for example. We can modify the transom layout, so you have three different options for transoms. Uh, this boat, you can have short casting deck, long casting deck, center console, side console. Uh, Big rear casting platform, no rear casting platform, outboard well only, and you just you can customise it. Anyway. Yeah, it, absolutely, and it, and it makes it so that we've got this this part here stays the same, but all the the parts that get glued in and screwed in are the parts where you can customise and make your own boat. The boat that looks like a deck here, yes, that'll be the equivalent in a cabin, for example. This flipped over, that's what this would be flipped over. Co correct. That's 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 exactly like what that is. So this would be flipped over and then dropped into that hull that we showed you on the 543 SF there. Okay. Then what we'll do is it'll all be foam filled, yep. uh, and then the, the boys will do the fit out of the boat. Fantastic. All right, right here we've got a little boat around the corner that might be- Yeah, your 580, let's have a look at your 580. Awesome. So what he's doing is uh, he's put 
um, the uh, for heckler cutting compound on, on the gel coat. Yep. So no matter what the boat comes out of the mould like, everything gets a full cut and polish. Okay. Uh, and then it gets waxed before it leaves the factory. Okay. So cut and polish, decals, because you don't want to stick the decals obviously over the wax. Yep. And then wax over the whole lot. Wow. So each boat spends uh, a full week in detailing. So the idea that a boat comes out of the mould, Mickey Mouse, shiny is not true. Um, they generally need to, uh, to have some sort of polish or well, you, modifications you, under them to get that extra buff and shine out of them. You can, and, and you can get a very good finish out of the mould, and, and, and a lot of people do. Right. Um, we tend to like to, to give it that extra bit. People expect a lot out of our boats. Yep. Uh, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. Sure. Um, but you know, th th there's a lot of labour in building one of our boats, and there's a lot of labour cost, um, which you can see in, in doing this sort of thing as well. We can really see that sign coming up now in that hole, that section he's working on, so yeah, that looks fantastic. Hopefully go to a new person's home down in Sydney. I hope so, hopefully. Um, it might sell it before the Sydney Boat Show, eh? Yeah, well, I hope so too. Okay, John, so we're looking at a finished boat. It's been through detail and this is pretty much how it comes out of the factory now, right? Yeah, this, this boat's a heavily customised boat. We had a customer in Gladstone who uh, asked for a side door. We don't, okay. we don't do a lot of side doors, uh, but it's an option available. And one thing I always say about our boats, and I, and I say to you guys as dealers, that you know, give me the opportunity to say no. Don't just expect the answer will be no. Okay. Um, we can customise a lot of things. and this So this one is, is an extra wide uh, door. Uh, to accommodate a customer in Gladstone, as I said, who has a wheelchair. Okay. And he had to get in with a wheelchair. So if you have a look here, we, we've made a custom. Wow. And that's so he can get in and out with his wheelchair. We also do a hinged version. So not this big, because it's quite big to hinge this one. Right. But a smaller version, like on the 600 RF Southern Predator that you saw, the, the, the fishing boat that's quite a basic boat. Yep. Uh, but it, it has a folding, uh, in, internally folding, uh, side door. Okay. So Thanks. we can do that as well. Yeah, that's incredible. Is that as simple as just getting out a chainsaw and going to the <laughs> town? Or? It's a bit like that. I wish it was that simple. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of hand finishing work involved in doing a, a custom side door like that. Um, certainly the finish on a custom side door is not as nice as uh, the finish would be on a, on a brand new boat as the way we, we intended it, but the customised stuff sometimes, um, because it, it's very particular, it's, it's quite difficult to get it priced well and finished to a certain acceptable standard. So we've got to make that, that uh, adjustment sometimes. Alright, we've been through the whole factory, we've seen you know, a very good example of how you take a boat and make it super strong and still produce a beautiful finish and refinement in your product. If you had a chance to meet a customer who's like in our shop or in, a, in a, another signature dealer's shop and they're making their crucial decision, they've got their top three boats they're looking at, why would they buy a signature? Yeah, I think it's certainly you, you get what you pay for and you've seen the signs in, in the factory that say to, to, to my team, build it as if you were going to own it. We take a lot of care in what we do. We use only the best materials. We, only, we use only the best cleats. We use only the best stainless steel. All 316 stainless steel throughout the boat. All the nuts, bolts, screws, washers, 316 grade stainless steel. We use um, the best fiberglass materials. We use knitted fabrics, as we also discussed. Uh, we use high density closed cell polyurethane that's, that's not we don't rely on that for structural integrity, but it certainly does help. Um, the hull designs, as you know, signature variable dead rise hull designs, softest riding hull designs in the market, uh, the most stable at rest in the market, and also um, smooth and, and comfortable. Uh, you know, that's, that's peace of mind, certainly. Fully foam, all of our boats are foam filled as standard. All of our boats are built to the Australian standard, um, which there is opposition out there that, that may or may not do that. You should always check that the boats are built to the Australian standard and make sure that it's fully foamed under the floor. Ask the questions. Um, ten year structural warranty, best in the market. Uh, two year comprehensive warranty, so it's a, it's a ten plus two warranty. Um, we control a lot of everything we do within the factory. We do our own upholstery. Uh, we do our own stainless steel. Uh, we do our own uh, layup and lam laminating. A lot of other companies, they, they have other people do their contract laminating for them, right. um, contract stainless steel for them, contract upholstery for them. It's all controlled in-house. Um, our boats are 
you know, we, we, we often get the, there's a couple of things that people say about our boats, they're too pretty to fish from. Absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, um, we do, with the wash down decks that we do with fiberglass in here, they're easier to hose out, easier to clean. Um, they're designed, we're fishermen, as you know, I'm a fisherman, my brother's a fisherman. Uh, my father, late father was a fisherman. Um, the other thing that you know we get is that our boats. Are, I often get a lot of people say to me, "I'd love to own a signature, but that's sort of the premium, and I can't afford it." People have got to ask the question. Our boats are not out they're out, not of, out of they're all. not out of reach at all. People they're very very accessible. and and certainly that's how, that's hurt us a little bit. I think in in the last few years that people think that our boats are not accessible. As you know, our boats are very accessible. We price um, as best we can for the for the product that we deliver to the market. And you you guys are doing a great job selling our product. And you know that you can compete with the opposition. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Especially when you're comparing quality, you know, one quality product with another quality product. Yeah. Again, you get what you pay for. John, it's been a privilege to go through it all, and uh, I've been wanting to, to show our customers what you guys can do, because we get to come up here fairly regularly and, and meet the team and, and go through things. At Good Times Marine, you can, it's not a matter of just looking at this boat and getting an indication of what's gone in to make it. We'll put it on the water for you. Come down, we've got demos available, and we'll show you what a signature can do in rugged conditions, offshore from Sydney. Come down, meet the team, let us price up a boat for you and take you for a ride, and show you why a signature is the right boat for you.